Welcome to the Three Chord Strand. It is Freeology Friday. The Three Chord Strand is a ministry of the Nation of Christ Church in Port Clinton, Ohio, led by the capable leadership of Bishop Anthony Calloway. The Three Chord Live has been going on for a couple of years now. We have an awesome lineup of teachers, preachers that bless us Monday through Friday with some really incredible revelation of the Word of God. On Mondays, we have the tag team duo of ministers Michelle Brown and Tammy Wilson, and they are breaking down all kinds of barriers, stereotypes about women in ministry, uh, things about uh, what we're supposed to have in Christ, and so on and so forth, and they are just an absolutely fabulous teaching combination. They're like a one-two punch of love and grace. On Tuesdays, we have elder, mother, Paula Curley, who bridges the gap between old school church and new school or new covenant grace. And she does it really awesomely. And she is the founder and the head of the Freedom Fighter Cell Group of the Nation of Christ Church. On Wednesdays, we have the co-founder of this ministry, Bishop Anthony Calloway teaching from his book, The Mind Game, M-I-N-D, Moving in New Directions, or like I like to say, Moving in New Dimensions, because it's a dimensional shift. It's not just directional. Directional is just direction, but dimensional is like from, from here to eternity. And he's teaching from this book, and I'm going to tell you something. If you want to hear it, an eloquent, uh, powerful teaching of the Word of God, you really need to listen to Bishop Calloway, and also you can get his book, The Mind Game, on lulu.com. On Thursdays, we have my friend and brother, the awesome Pastor Kyle Butler of New Beginnings in Patterson, New Jersey. And Pastor Kyle has been showing us the Father, and now he's showing us what God has placed inside of us. And this is a powerful, powerful revelation. And also, Pastor Kyle, uh, co-hosts co with Pastor Lynn Bennett Jr. on the Grace Line on Monday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You don't want to miss the Grace Line. I'm going to tell you something. That is an absolutely phenomenal ministry whose teachings will absolutely rock your world. And you need to have your world rock from time to time. <laughs> and it's Friday. So we're uh, in Freeology Friday. And the song I'm playing today is at last I am free by Sheik. At last I am free. I, I can hardly see in front of me. I can hardly see in front of me. Listen, freedom is the objective. Freedom is why we're here. Freedom is what God had and, he's, and that's what he's given to us. And this freeology it's either free theology or freedom from theology, depending on where you sit. I can hardly see in front of me. God, the song just ministers to me in such a way. Listen, I'm going to tell you, I hear the gospel in so many different places. You know, people think that you can only hear the gospel and gospel music. And, and I really believe that that is a myth. I believe that God puts his signature, his stamp on everything in the world. And I believe that if you look with eyes open, with your mind open, with your heart open, that you will hear, see, and feel the gospel. That being said, today I want to talk about an article that I saw. Um... Oh my God, it, it, the, the premise of the article was this. Should Christians watch Game of Thrones? Now, let me just say for the record, I have never watched Game of Thrones. I'm, I'm, my wife and I, we've been talking about uh, sitting and doing a binge watch and kind of trying to get caught up uh, just to, so that we can see what, what, it, what, it, what all the hubbub is about. But I don't watch it. However... I don't knock people that do. Listen, if you watch Game of Thrones, then good on you, mate. I mean, enjoy it. If I don't care what it is that you watch. If you watch The Twilight Zone or if you watch Twilight, if you, it doesn't matter. Listen, I have 
a question that I want to start this discussion off with, and that is, what couldn't God do at the point of creation? What couldn't God do? What were God's limitations? What were God's restrictions? What is it that God couldn't do? Now, as you think about that, I want you to consider this, that God created us in his image to look like him and his likeness to act like him. This means that the same restrictions that God had or didn't have, we have or don't have. Do you follow what I'm saying? In other words, God is not going to create a copy of himself to be a mere puppet. God created us to be a part of him. God created us to be an extension of him. And this is like what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he said that there are all these restrictions, you know, taste not, handle not, touch not. Do you follow what I'm saying? This restriction is a byproduct of religion. There, there is absolutely nothing that you consume in terms of uh, recordings or uh, music or television or movies or any of that. There are no restrictions. And watch this. People are going to say, oh, well, here's Derek again giving people a license to sin. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Here's statistically that one out of four drivers on the road are not licensed. One out of four. In other words, <laughs> one out of four people that you encounter on the nation's highways are unlicensed. And then there's probably even a bigger percentage of those who are uninsured. And yet they drive. Why? Because criminality does not require a license. You don't need a license to sin. Listen, when you're sinning, you're sinning just fine whether you have a license to do it or not. But what grace does is it gives you a license to be above it. If you operate in love, because love will go out of its way not to offend, and love will go out of its way to bless, if you're operating in love, then that means you won't be operating in sin because you, listen, anything that's outside of love is sin, okay? So if you're not, if, if you're operating in, within love, you're not in sin, period, period, full stop. Now, there, some people say, well, what about pornography, Derek? What about it? Okay, yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't watch pornography. And the reason why you shouldn't watch pornography is not because of any social more, because of any religious restriction or God can't look upon you while you're looking at pornography. Listen, God is ubiquitous. He's everywhere and he sees what you're doing. And I'm not saying that to put a guilt trip on you. I'm just saying that that's the deal. But watch this. Pornography objectifies sex and it reduces the participants in pornography to mere objects. It's objectifying things. And when you objectify things, that's not treating things in love. It's not treating people in love. So if you're not operating in love, then it's sin. Do you follow what I'm saying? In, in other words, it, it's what pornography produces that is the sin, not the pornography itself. Anyway... <laughs> I could go on and on about drink. Let's say drinking, for example, the same thing. It, if you're, if you're enjoying a glass of scotch or if you're enjoying a cigar or if you're enjoying a joint, you know, I, that's not a big deal. But when you do it to the point where you are completely out of your mind and you're prone to do something that may hurt someone, that may offend someone, that may kill someone, then you're operating a sin because that is not love. Do you, you follow what I'm saying? That if anything that is not of love is sin. Now, the Bible says that anything that is not of faith is sin, but watch, faith works by love. Now, let me keep going here because I don't have a whole lot of time. <laughs> Listen, we 
are not restricted against anything. I used to believe that, that there were certain kinds of music, that there were certain kinds of rap music and certain kinds of uh, hard rock, that, these, that this was the devil's music. This was the spawn of Satan. And listen, every note, every measure, every beat, everything concerning music belongs to God. God created everything. God, everything in this world was created by God. The devil has, if there is a devil, has no power to create anything. Well, you know, uh, fictional beings really generally don't, but let me keep going. <laughs> the, the reality is, is that the, you can listen to music as long as that music does not lead you to operate outside of love. The, pro we, we pro the problem that we have where we enter into failure is when we begin to operate outside of love. That's the problem. And if we just remember to love, see, here's another thing that people will talk about the music that you listen to or the movies that you watch, but they will refuse to love someone. Listen, I, I'm, I, I've said this. I am pro-life. I am unabashedly pro-life. I am anti-abortion, but I'm also anti-war. I'm anti-poverty. I'm anti-capital punishment. I'm a Listen, anything that is not pertaining to life, I am opposed to. But there are people who will, will say that profanity is an issue or what you watch is an issue or what you listen to is an issue, but they will casually watch people being oppressed and brutalized without saying anything. To me, that now that's operating outside of love because love would say, listen, we need to stop this. We need to stop people from being hurt. We need to stop people from being killed. We need to stop people from being put in cages. We need to stop people from just uh, being ob objectified because of their, uh, their race or their ethnicity or their culture. We need to stop that. That's not love. So anyway, should you watch Game of Thrones? If you watch Game of Thrones, more power to you. Listen, I would say that if, if you're on the spectrum of things, right? You know, watching, watching Game of Thrones is probably no better or no worse than watching Greenleaf, which Greenleaf is a story about a pastor and his family. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? It doesn't, it, you know, basically TV is TV. There is no devil's TV and there is no devilish TV. Watch this. If, if you watch something that causes you to operate outside of love. Now, again, let's, let's talk about reality TV. Because if you watch Maury Povich, they're fine. Great. I don't watch it. But here's the thing. That if you see something on Maury that causes you to objectify or to denigrate somebody else in real life, then what you've done is you've operated in a sinful capacity. But watch this. God is so good that he knows uh, what we've done before we've done it. And that's why the author of Hebrews said that he would remember our sins and iniquities no more. That means that everything that we've done before we've done it, God has already forgiven it and forgotten it. The, nothing that you watch or listen to or do is going to separate you from God. Paul wrote in Romans that neither life nor death nor height nor depth nor principalities nor powers, nothing will separate us from the love of God. And when he's talking about us, he's talking about all humanity. There is no one in all of the, the entirety of humanity that is in any way, shape, form, or fashion separated from God. As a matter of fact, humanity was never separated from God because the, the, we were separated from God in our minds. That's just like if you have a child and your child becomes a, a, a rebel and decides to go off and do his own thing or her own thing. Do you know that that child is still your child? There is no separation between you and your child. It is in that child's mind that they are separated from you. Or if you go off and do something that, that is contrary to love, then it's you who are operating in separation. But the, 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 the truth of the matter is, is that you and your child are of the same substance. And because you're of the same substance, you are inseparable. Now, let me share something else with you because this is going to blow your mind. Because all of humanity, all of humanity was created from the source of God. Everything was created from God. Now watch this. If God is love and that is his substance, right? 
what did God create everything from? What did God make everything from? Where did the substance, where did the molecules, where did the atoms from every, for everything come from? They came from him. And he, since he is love, everything that you come in contact with in your physical senses is of love. Everything was created for love, by love, because of love. Everything. And because all of humanity is created in the image and the likeness of God, that means we are all connected, that there is no separation between people. Listen, anytime you say that somebody should be separated because of race, because of culture, because of country or whatever, listen, in God's eyes, there are no borders. And since in God's eyes, there are no borders, there should be no border walls. Instead of building bigger, taller walls, we should be building longer tables. In other words, we should be inviting more people to the feast instead of trying to keep them out. But that's, that's kind of off topic. I want to get back to it. The question is, what can't you do? What is the prohibition? And there are none. There are no prohibitions to anything. You can do exactly what you want to do. The, the thing is, is that when you wake up and you realize that Christ is in you, that the hope of glory is in you, that the mind of Christ is in you, that all of these things that God created, that he equipped you with from the factory, when you wake up to the realization of that, you will realize that there is no need to try to take from any, anyone. There is no reason to try to hurt anyone, to speak ill of anyone. There is no reason. Why? Because you have woken up to love and that is the consciousness of righteousness. That when we operate in love, that means that no, listen, when you operate in love, you will not want to do anything that hurts anyone, that offends anyone. You will have empathy. In other words, you will always look at things not only through your own eyes, but through the eyes of others. You will not only want to walk in your own footsteps, but you'll want to walk a mile in another's shoes. Not only that, but you will actually begin to develop an emotional bond, a caring, a feeling, a need to be concerned about what others are going through. And when you get to all of that, you just realize that there are no boundaries. There are no restrictions. If God is completely free, and yes, he is, there is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. That means God created you to be able to do everything in this space. That's what he created us for. He created us to replicate him, to look like him, to act like him, to, rep, uh, to represent and replicate his will, his culture, and his intent here in this three-dimensional space. And I believe that when we begin to operate fully in love, that we will begin to operate as Jesus did post-resurrection. In other words, physical matter will no longer even be a hindrance to us. And that the second coming of Christ, as it were, because there, the, 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 the second coming of Christ happened in 70 AD, but we'll see him when we begin to operate at the frequency of love. When we begin to vibrate at the same frequency that he does, like uh, my, my sister, uh, Dr. K. Fairchild said that, we, that we natural beings are simply spirit beings slowed down to a point of perception. Th that's it. So when we, when we begin to vibrate at the same frequency of Jesus, we're operating at the frequency of pure love. And, and, and that's why Jesus was able to say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here now. And the kingdom of heaven is a government without laws. It is a government without rules because the only thing that governs and holds it all together is love. So that's what I have for you today. I pray that it blesses you. 
If this video blesses you, please consider sharing it with others. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up at comments at DerekDay.com or on my website at www.DerekDay.com. You can also hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. My handle is Derek E. Day. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-E-D-A-Y. And you can also uh, follow me on um, on YouTube, the channel is called Derek Day, and there are 700 plus videos out there that will help you walk in the too good to be true news of unfettered liberty through God's unconditional love and unlimited grace. And don't forget to check out the podcast, the Love Forward podcast, which is on Apple iTunes and Google Play. And next week, my guest will be Kyle Butler and Aaron Abke. And I'm not going to tell you what the subject is. You just gonna have to turn tune in to find out. So that being said, I'm gonna close as I always do by saying that God loves you, and so do I. You're loved and valued, highly valued and precious. Stay blessed. <laughs>